Okay, this is Orlando Wilson here. And what I want to talk about in this short video is formations for close protection. Now, this is something which is, again, very misunderstood and there's so much BS out there about different formations, it's unreal. Um, I've been in this business over 30 years now. So I understand how things work. I understand what works, what doesn't work and also the realities of providing protection services in various environments, numerous environments. And again, a lot of what people are talking about, a lot of what people are putting out there is complete and utter rubbish. It sells courses, but um, it sells fantasies, but in reality, people are not getting trained, they're getting mistrained. I was reading, or well, somebody sent me an article recently that was in, of all things, the Financial Times about bodyguards, etc., etc., and you know what? There were some top names there in the security world writing about stuff, but it's pretty clear from what they were writing about, they had no clue about the close protection world. One person was stating about the Star of Texas formation. I've never heard of that. I joke about people being in Starbucks drinking too many gluten-free, caffeine-free, fat-free lattes. I think that guy was drinking too much uh, single malt scotch because that's something I've never heard about, the Star of Texas formation. Now, you've got to think about with formations, CP formations. The main thing I tell people is you have to be adaptable and flexible to the location you're going to be working in. And a lot of these set formations, the four-man formation, the box formations, the diamond formations, all this, you're not going to be able to do those in public. Your formation has to be adaptable to the situation you're in. And I also tell people you need to make maximum use of your manpower. So your manpower needs to be employed to dominate as much of the area around you as possible. A lot of these formations are reactive. They're nothing but if you're attacked, then you react to that attack. Whereas you want to have people out dominating the area around you to alert you if there's a problem so you can avoid the attack. I said it in other videos. If all you're doing is being responsive, if there is an incident and you have to use force, then people are going to get hurt, people are going to go, go to jail. If the assailants coming after you or coming after your client are armed, people are going to get hurt. If you don't identify the problem before it happens and somebody opens fire on you, by the time you react, you're already taking, you're already taking fire and rounds are coming in your direction. So you need to be able to identify the threat before it happens. This is where a lot of these formations, complete BS. I put an emphasis on protective surveillance and dominating the area, identifying the problems just in, rather than just relying on reactive set formations. Now think about whatever type of formation. Let's talk about people like the box formation or the diamond formation. Three, three to four guys, four guys. Think about now, think about most shopping malls. Could you use a diamond formation, a box formation in a shopping mall? Could you use a box formation walking down Oxford Street in London? Could you use a box formation walking around Dubai Mall? Could you use a box formation really anywhere where there's public? Well, anywhere that is public. Okay, what are you going to do to prevent people, the general public, walking into your formation? You're going to stop them? You're going to block them? Well, I guarantee if you're walking down Oxford Street and you're pushing people out of the way and you're stopping people from walking into your formation, you're going to have major issues. The cops will be called. Because in most places, if you touch somebody without their permission, it's an assault. You're in, I guarantee, I know for a fact, if you try this stuff in a lot of shopping malls in the US without informing the mall, security what you're doing who will inform the police what you're doing the mall security will call the cops on you pretty quick and then you're the police will be wanting to know what you're doing again in the u.s if you're in i'm thinking some high profile shopping malls if you start blocking people pushing people out the way etc you're gonna have major issues you're gonna have fights and in south florida when surprise me guns will be drawn on you so the thing is with all these set formations, yeah, they look cool on courses. They look cool in public car parks, 
But think about now from a realistic perspective, where can you go in a box formation? You can't, it's not, it's not realistic. You look stupid. It draws attention. Four guys in suits surrounding a client look stupid. And again, think about it from a practical point of view. Somebody tries to get into that formation. Some old woman who just happens to be out during a grocery shopping walks towards that formation. What are you gonna do? Push her out of the way? Assault charge, thank you. You're going to jail. Well, you're going to court to start with. So again, this is this is where a lot of people have misconceptions about the close protection business. And I think one of the biggest issues is the people that's providing the services, the management of the companies have no actual experience of providing close protection. There's so many issues with people providing training courses and training people for whatever type of license that have that them themselves have no experience of actually providing close protection services. Different formations might walk, work in work for PSD, but that's a different situation. To me, PSD is more like cash in transit more than anything else. But if you're providing realistic, or if you're providing real close protection services in the civilian commercial world to various types of clients, it's completely different than providing close protection to government clients or providing PSD services. And the sad fact is the majority of people out there teaching and influencing people do not have the experience of providing close protection in the real world. So all I say to people is look at what you're being told and think, is this real? Is it going to work in reality? And a lot of what I'm seeing these days, uh, you know, I can trip people up with a couple of questions of, what will happen if somebody tries to walk into your formation? You stop them, there's going to be an issue. That's an assault charge. You're drawing issues to yourself. You're drawing attention, causing problems where there's no need to be problems. Formations need to be adaptable, flexible, and you need, if you've got multiple people, that's another thing I'll talk about in another video. If you've got more than two people, one person working with a client, then you should employ your manpower to dominate the ground, not just walk around looking like a goon. Okay, I've got three books up on Amazon specifically to do with close protection. Um, we're throwing up more videos on social media, LinkedIn, Telegram, uh, sorry, LinkedIn, Instagram, etc., etc. We do have a Telegram channel if you want to jump on. Um, and if you've got any questions, reach out and uh, drop me a line. But all I say is uh, question everything these days and keep it real. If, if people can explain to you, 100% what they're teaching you. And if it doesn't make sense to you, then it's BS. Stay safe, stay out of trouble, be good boys and girls.